Hi there, my name is JD Braun here with you with a, another video for the Security Best Practices series. In this Security Best Practices series, we're going to be talking about isolating the lake house and how to deploy an isolated architecture on Databricks. Like I mentioned before, my name is JD Braun. I'm a senior specialist solutions architect in cloud infrastructure and security here at Databricks. As always, to start these off, we always like to point folks to our Security and Trust Center, which has an overview of our best practices, talks about our in-product security, our assurance and compliance capabilities, details on our secure software development lifecycle, and additional details on how we approach privacy, like our DPA, our security addendum, and our contracts. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about isolating the lake house and how to create an isolated environment within Databricks. So before we get into the architecture details, let's just go ahead and talk about the use cases up front of an architecture like this. So some of the architectures are for, some of these use cases would be for highly regulated industries, such as financial services, health and life sciences, or insurances with strict security controls, or environments for non-internal users, such as third-party consultants or contractors, where an organization is inviting third parties into their environment, but may not want them to have egress controls on the environment or be able to operate outside the boundaries of the box that they're going to be working in Databricks within. Next is mitigating risk of data exfiltration from unaware malicious users in an otherwise production environment. So within the isolated lake house architecture, this will have no egress access to the internet whatsoever. So taking a step further than your classic egress firewall that you may see, if you'd like to give developers access to say PyPy Maven or other third party APIs. And then last but not least, Isolake is a lightweight and isolated network architecture. It's entirely isolated from itself, so it could be a good fit for organizations that have minimal IPv4 space or complex network topologies to integrate into. So it'll be within, entirely isolated within its own VPC, and it doesn't need to talk to any assets outside of that VPC, excluding S3 through an S3 gateway endpoint. So let's talk about some of the features of this architecture before we go into the demo. First things first, most importantly, no public internet access from the cluster. So as we know from a Databricks perspective, in our classic compute plane, clusters are spun up within the target AWS account, which you can see here in the diagram. Those clusters are going to make outbound calls to AWS resources like S3 through an S3 gateway endpoint, STS and Kinesis through interface endpoints, and then to the Databricks control plane through the REST and secure cluster connectivity Databricks interface endpoints. So everything residing within that nice box that we have to the right here. This architecture mitigates the risk of data exfiltration, unauthorized assets, access to such assets as packages or more. And then this is a good example of taking the egress firewalls a step further where you may not want to manage or implement one to begin with. In addition, Unity Catalog, the governance engine behind the lake house is fully accessible through those Unity, through those private link interface endpoints. So users can still go into the workspace, operate, process data like they would normally, despite being unaware that they cannot reach outbound to the public internet. Next in this architecture for isolating lake house, we try and take it a step further where we also want the ability to restrict AWS endpoints. So like I mentioned before in this architecture, the clusters are still able to talk to S3 through an S3 gateway endpoint. However, to further mitigate the risk of potentially accessing an unauthorized bucket, these endpoints can be restricted to assets from Databricks, such as logging and the artifact buckets, 
and then data buckets provided by the deployer to access for data access, like processing, querying, et cetera. Lastly, you can also restrict the endpoints for SDS and Kinesis as well to restrict it only down to the Databricks use case, thus really creating a nice boundary amongst your, your assets. Another point of this architecture is an optional front-end access restriction. So we talked quite a bit in the last two slides about how the back-end connectivity access various assets, whether that's the public internet or lack thereof, and then the endpoints. In this architecture, we can also implement a front-end access pattern where users need to be need to go through AWS AppStream and to access the underlying workspace. So using AppStream, they log into a virtual machine per se, and then they can access the workspace directly. However, if they're not within that virtual machine or that Amazon AppStream instance, they cannot access the workspace directly. So this is a great use case for if you have third-party contractors or other agents that may not be directly tied to your organization that you don't want them copying and pasting out of the environments, or you want to restrict how they interact with other internet access within the browser itself. So another hardening attempt for the isolating or isolate architecture. Now, an architecture is great, but there's always limitations associated to it. So a few limitations with this isolated architecture is number one, on the classic compute claim clusters, you need to implement Apache Derby configs. What that means is Apache Derby is an in-memory hive metastore. So it removes the need to have the outbound access on port 3306 to the default Hive Metastore that exists within the Databricks control plane, since that is not currently supported by AWS Private Link. In lieu of Apache Derby, you could also create your own Hive Metastore that exists within your AWS account to have access. However, with Unity Catalog, it really starts to remove the necessity to have a Hive Metastore and in the interim, as Spark and Hive continue to separate themselves, Apache Derby is a great use of that. It also only is up for the duration of the cluster. So if a user does decide to save anything there by accident, it will be removed at the end of the session. The next limitation is there is no access to community programming packages. So for example, there is a plethora, as we all know, packages on PyPy and Maven, et cetera. But with the no internet access, those will not be provided or be able to be downloaded. However, the Databricks runtime does have packages available depending on the runtime that you choose, whether it's the classic or the ML. And you could always host your own private package repository that could be accessible by the cluster. The next is no access to vetted APIs for available through the public internet. This goes without saying and ties into the last point with no public internet access. This will come into play if you're interacting with any third party APIs to maybe augment your data or pull that data. However, you could always set up other means through a network load balancer or route it through your private connectivity that exists within AWS. And then last, if you do decide to implement the front end portion of this to route users through a Amazon AppStream instance, this will restrict say BI tooling or other API calls into the environment. Now there are workarounds for this if you'd like to implement a hybrid model of private link as well as IP access lists you could circumvent those so that BI tools could interact with the workspace through a front end IP access list, but then users need to go through the front end private link. The final limitation is that this will, this architecture is only available on our enterprise tier, which supports private link. Now, in summary of this architecture, 
We are removing public internet access due to be the power of Unity Catalog and AWS Private Link. We can restrict access to AWS resources with scope down policies, and we can restrict access to Databricks workspace directly with Amazon AppStream. Now to learn more, we have an associated blog post as well as a GitHub that is the Isolake or the Isolated Lake House repository. And then we also have our security reference architecture Terraform templates published by Databricks where the backend architecture is supported under the deployment pattern, quote, isolated. Now with that, let's go ahead and get into a demo of how this works. So the first thing we'll notice is in the account console that you'll be familiar with from a Databricks perspective is that if we go in the workspaces, we're gonna see our Isolake workspace. Our Isolake workspace will have be, look like many normal workspaces that you'll have seen, a credentials configuration, a storage configuration, network, Metastore, storage and managed services, customer managed keys. The important part here is that in the network and in the private access setting that dictates how the front end behavior works according to front end private link is going to be set to public access disabled. Meaning that if I decide to go into this workspace and try and access it, it's gonna give me a validation error saying that this has been disallowed by your administrator. Now, if I go into our AppStream instance and try and log into it, which is an isolated box, in lack of a better phrase, and try and log in, I'm not seeing that same validation error. So now I can go ahead and log in and pass right in through the workspace. Again, a nice front end access pattern for your very re regulated workloads. If you don't want this to be accessed by anything outside of a, a box with public internet access, this is a fine solution for it. Now, like I mentioned before, this isolate pattern can be used from a front end, back end, or both. So you could only implement the back end pattern if you just don't want users accessing the public internet or otherwise, the front end pattern is entirely optional. Now, as we look in the workspace itself and we take a look at the compute, We're going to see we have a cluster that's currently running in AWS and up and accessible by myself, the user. If I navigate to my workspace and I click on my notebook, we're going to take a look at some of the commands that I've run in this pattern just to really drive home the point of how we're accessing the environment. The first call is a canceled pip install. So I tried to install the Mosaic ML package. And it's saying this connection has been broken. The network cannot be established. This is expected given that the environment cannot reach out to the public internet. The next call is trying to get my IP. So trying to access my IP from the public internet in the same vein as the pip install is not going to be accessible. However, the power of this architecture is the ability to interact with Databricks resource, right? Have Databricks resources interact with AWS resources such as S3 buckets governed by Unity Catalog. So I've loaded AWS Databricks destination as an external location within Unity Catalog. So if I take a look at my catalog to the right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually go into the catalog pane itself, and we're gonna go and take a look at the external locations or external data, you're gonna see that this has been loaded as an external location. So managed by Unity Catalog for both the storage credential and corresponding external location, I can interact directly with that S3 path without the need for public internet access itself. So here we can see that I've been able to query and do my standard DB utils on the AWS Databricks destination and 
then read it into a Spark data frame and display it. So again, even without public internet access, you're able to access your data through private link with Unity Catalog on those interface endpoints and through the corresponding S3 gateway endpoint. Not to mention with these workspaces, if you still want to utilize serverless, you can, since this network pattern will only be applied to classic compute. To go behind the scenes here in the last part of this demo, let's take a look at what this looks like from the AWS console perspective. So we can see here, I've highlighted our Isolake data plane VPC. This is the VPC where clusters are currently running. So if I look in my EC2 console and I go into my running instances, we're going to see these environments are running within that VPC. And on their security group, they're allowing only within the same security inbound and then with between the same security group outbound. So the private link endpoints are actually deployed in the same private subnet, meaning that the only outbound call it's making is a 443 to the prefix list of the S3 gateway endpoint since those IPs technically do not exist within the VPC themselves. So really restricting down that cluster security group. If we navigate back to the VPCs, we can also see that we have a workspace isolate lockdown VPC. This is where our AppStream instance is currently working. So if we navigate to our AppStream fleet, we can see that the configuration, the network is using that VPC. It's deployed within a subnet in that same private subnet. In the VPC tab, we're going to see all of the VPC endpoints that we're using. And in that workspace lockdown, how that AppStream instance is interacting with the Databricks endpoint is using our front end REST API. So going over this private link endpoint that we subsequently have logged in the network configuration to show that, hey, we want users to go over this endpoint when they're accessing the workspace. So we are working on two fronts here. We have the private link access that enables the backend connectivity for the clusters to come up, which is part one. And then we have the private link interface endpoints to go through for the AppStream instance to actually access the workspace to allow a user to interact with the workspace in an isolated fashion while not being able to log in through the public internet. Again, just a easy, straightforward way to mitigate a number of risks that may come with a in a highly regulated industry or with third party users. Again, I'll end that this architecture is not for everybody. I think there are plenty of use cases where interacting with the public internet is very beneficial. Like I mentioned, whether that's in development and accessing the various Python packages or whether that's interacting with a third party API. In addition, an egress firewall could be used and that's a, another common behavior that we see customers using to not allow unfiltrated access to the public internet, but restrict it. So to top off, we have our isolated network pattern with our quote unquote isolate architecture that allows the clusters to interact with Databricks resources through Unity Catalog, as well as AWS resources through various interface endpoints in S3. And we have a front end private link pattern that allows users to only access the workspace through a AppStream instance. And with that, that's a summary of our isolated lake house pattern here on Databricks. Thank you so much.